Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Now several months ago, I really started getting into sublimation. And so one of the things I made was a poster. And it's beautiful. It's so much better than my old coaster that I used on my side table. But the problem is, this is a hard surface and water pools or liquid pools and eventually it runs over the side. So what I decided was I'm going to make a coaster in my Glowforge out of cork and place it under my sublimation coaster to catch the liquid. If you have a Glowforge or you're thinking about getting a Glowforge, here's a couple things I think are really important to have on hand. First of all, a pair of digital calipers. Now these are just very, very inexpensive, about $10, and I got these off of Amazon. I'll link to these in the description of my video. If you're not familiar with calipers, these will help you measure the thickness of your material. So I turn them on, and right now they're zeroed out. Let's say there was a number there and your jaws were closed. You would just click on this zero, and it would take it back to zero. So you open them up, then close them firmly on your material, and you can see this cork is 0.19 inches. Now the other thing that I think is very important is to have some type of masking material. In the laser, you need to be very careful that what you use is laser safe. And this is a paper-based masking material that I also got off of Amazon, and I'll link to this as well. So I'm just gonna put some of this where I'll make my cut and where I'll make my engraving. And a lot of the times you can see, I just rip it. But I will actually cut it today. And then I'm just gonna place it down where my design will cut out. Now, this is a very low tack. It's not super sticky, it comes off very easily, but I think it makes a big difference so you don't scorch the front of your project. For projects where the back is also important, like leather earrings, you want the backs to look nice as well, then I'll typically mask the front and the back. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, you might be really interested in a Glowforge. I did receive an email from them just today that said if you order the Pro, that those are going out within seven days, the Plus, I think it said two to three weeks, and then the basic model was taking quite a long time. If you're interested in buying a Glowforge, I will have a discount link in the description of this video. If you use that, you would get $250 off a Plus model or $500 off a Pro model. In addition to you getting the discount, I would receive the same amount in a referral fee. I truly appreciate that. I did get notified by Glowforge that someone used mine just very, very recently. They don't give me a lot of information. They give me your first name, and so there's no true way for me to contact you to tell you how much I appreciate it. So if you use my link, please let me know so that I can give you a proper thank you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside my Glowforge, then we'll open up the Glowforge software. I've opened up the Glowforge software and I'm on my dashboard. So I'm gonna click on Create, Upload from File, then I'm going to upload the file I just designed. Okay, so you can see the bed of my Glowforge. And the first thing I want to do, besides kind of moving this up into place, I want to go up here to these three dots, say Set Focus, and then click right in the middle of where I plan to cut. What that does is it causes the camera to really focus here, and it recalibrates it. Okay, so I can see I'm a little high. Let's just drag this down a little bit. And it looks like I need to pull my masking down. Let me just add a small piece of masking paper to this really quickly. Okay, it rescanned the bed, so now I can move it down. So I'm gonna go up here to unknown, and I'm gonna say I'm using uncertified material. 
If you buy your material from Glowforge, it's certified. If you don't, it's not. The thickness of mine was 0.19. So I'll go ahead and submit that. Notice the screen kind of jumped. So I'm going to go ahead and click up here again, say set focus. I'll reset that. It looks like I might be really close over here now. I may need to move my design over. Right here you can see that it says it's focusing, so I'll wait till that's done to move my design. Okay, so I'll move it a little bit. You can see this is really <laughs> a tight fit. Okay, we're going to hope for the best here. Let me make sure my 0.19 is still in there. It is. So now I need to enter the settings for my engraving. First, I need to tell it engraving is what I'm doing. So I'll click right here. I'll make sure I'm on that layer. Enter settings. Click on engrave. Now to enter my actual settings, you go to manual. And based upon some tests that I did, I'm going to use a speed of 700 and a power of 50. For the lines per inch, which is like dots per inch, it helps in the clarity or the resolution. With this engrave, I'm fine with 225. You see here's some other options. Now I need to enter the settings for my circle. This is going to be my cut layer. So I'll click on Enter Settings, and I'll let Glowforge know I want to cut. Once again, I go down here to Manual, and my cut is going to be a speed of 200 and a power of full. One pass is enough and I have my machine set on auto focus height. Now that I have all my settings in I can click right here on print so this one coaster and it's because of all this engraving is going to take roughly 13 and a half minutes. If I didn't have the engraving, this cut would probably take maybe 12 seconds. But the engraving really adds a lot of time. I'm going to go ahead and remove the masking paper. And then there's still some centers that I need to take off. I think what I'll do is just try a little alcohol and see if that removes them. So I'm just going to spray a paper towel. You're going to see some soot from the Glowforge. Now the other thing I want to do is just remove the excess soot from the outside. So I'm going to really spray my paper towel very well. Then I'm just going to rub around the outside. It doesn't necessarily need to be alcohol to do this. So there I am with my design, and I think now, when I put my coaster on it, any of the excess liquid's just going to roll over on the cork, and it's going to protect my table. Thanks so much for joining me today and sticking it out till the end. Until my next video, bye-bye.